Nozzle clogs, they hurt deeply and happen at the most inopportune times, resulting in your project grinding to a halt, which results in more foul language than an Irishman at last orders. But all is not lost. There is hope, and with a little luck and patience, you won't have to replace anything. Okay, first things first. What causes a clog? So this depends on where the clog is, actually. Normally, when you have a nozzle clog, it happens at the very tip of the nozzle. This is where the 0.4 millimeter or higher or maybe a bit lower hole is, but on top it's about two millimeters in diameter. Normally clogs don't happen there. It only happens at that tiny, tiny tip. And this is because particulates build up. Maybe you had some filament that was left in the workshop and it's been gathering dust for a long time. It happens. I'm surprised it doesn't happen here actually that often, but it does happen. If you have a dusty workshop, then it will build up on that filament and eventually it will make its way to the nozzle and boom, you have a clog. But that is not the only cause. A lot of filaments you might use might have particles in it that don't melt, like metal, stone, wood, or glitter. These all have very, very small particles, and this can build up in your nozzle and cause a clog. Normally, we would recommend a 0.6 millimeter nozzle for any of these kinds of filaments, unless the manufacturer has recommended a 0.4. Another reason for a clog might be a filament change. So you might have been using nylon, which is a high temperature filament, 270 degrees plus, and then you might have swapped to PLA, which is a low temperature, 205, 210, something like that. There might be some nylon still stuck in the nozzle, and as that melts at a much higher temperature, it might not melt completely when you're printing that PLA, get stuck and cause a clog. All of these cases are thankfully relatively easy to fix. There are a couple of exceptions though. If you don't notice that your filament has clogged and it keeps printing, the force from the extruder can compact that blockage, making it much more difficult to melt out and therefore clean. Even worse, if you don't notice it, that high temperature can cause that compactness to degrade and basically carbonize, meaning that it's even more difficult to melt out. Worst case scenario, this can build up even further to cause a blockage in your heat break, which can't be melted out because it's kept cool. In order to fix this, you would need to disassemble the whole hot end, which is infuriating. Heat break clogs can be much more irritating than nozzle clogs because of this. Other reasons for a heat break clog could be improper retraction settings, which might retract molten filament into the heat break where it solidifies. What? Now, thankfully, that is a rare problem. But what if your heat sink fan fails? Well, besides that being a safety concern, it can also do the same thing. But we're going to offer some solutions in order to fix these problems from very basic to considerably tricky. Let's get started. OK, first up is a simple nozzle clog. In most cases, these are easy to fix. Simply turn up your hot end to a temperature a bit higher than the maximum recommended printing temperature for your filament. If you're using PLA, then a temperature of 240 is totally okay. If you have a hot end with a PTFE insert, then it's okay to reach this temperature for a short time, but not much longer. But you can simply remove the PTFE tube before. Okay, now that your nozzle is warmed up, you can use one of these. This is basically an acupuncture needle, and it comes with pretty much every printer that you get. It's about 0.3 millimeters in diameter, and it's perfect for using for a nozzle that is 0.4 millimeters or bigger. First up, remove your filament and slowly jab this up there. This will break the blockage and you can then push the filament through manually and it will extrude out the remains of the blockage. Repeat this a few times until the extruded filament looks clean. For more extreme cases, you can do a cold pull. This means heating up the hot end in the same manner and then adding a filament. Best choice would be one with a higher melting temperature than the one that caused the blockage, but even better is one that is a bit flexible like nylon. Push it through until it extrudes a bit and then cool down the hot end to about 150 degrees. This will keep the filament soft, but not at melting temperature. You can then yank out the filament and it should come out with the blockage. This is why nylon is a good choice. It's a bit flexible, so we don't want that strand of filament snapping when we yank it out. This is also why we warm the nozzle a little bit so that the actual filament and the blockage is kept near melt viscosity, so it's easier to pull out. OK, that's all pretty much general knowledge. The problem with these is that they are thin and not easy to maintain. When you are using these, these might bend, so you can't always use them again and again. You might have to restock. The other issue is that these are 0.3 millimeters in diameter, so you can't use this with a 0.3 millimeter nozzle or something smaller. In such a case, you would need to remove the nozzle from the hot end, but we still need to heat this up. So you could use a propane torch or something like this. 
a heat gun. A heat gun is probably the best thing to use. You can use a propane torch, but it's a bit overkill. And especially with a hardened steel nozzle, these are tempered. If the temperature goes high enough, it can cause the nozzle to lose strength. You can then pick at the back of the nozzle with your acupuncture needle. However, this just might be not enough. And if that still doesn't solve it, then we need to consider chemical unclogging. The right solvent depends on the filament that you're using. If you're using ASA, ABS or HIPS, then the best solvent would be something like acetone. Now we have this in the shop. It's very, very useful, not just for this application. If you're using PETG or PLA, then the best choice would be something like this. This is ethyl acetate. Uh, don't know where to find this? Well, it's actually quite easy. Just go into a pharmacy or makeup shop and get some nail varnish remover that has ethyl acetate in it. You can find ones with this. Normally they do have acetone, but it's quite easy to find. Or you could just raid someone's makeup bag. Using ethyl acetate isn't always as straightforward as it seems. I have seen some PLA dissolve better in acetone and some better in ethyl acetate. You might want to search online to see if someone has done this with your particular brand of filament. Chances are someone has already done it. If you're using something like nylon, well, that's a bit tricky. So nylon is quite resistant to solvents. Um, you could use formic acid or sulfuric acid, but this tends to corrode the metal the nozzle is made from. So you're on your own, sorry. After immersing your nozzle in solvent for a day or two, just for good measure, you can pick at the back of it with the acupuncture needle to clear out anything, allow the solvent to evaporate, put it back in your printer and try and heat it up and push some filament through. Okay, that's nozzles, but what about heat breaks? So this is a little trickier because you can't just melt this out. I have seen some people removing the heat break from your hot end and then using an Allen key to just push out the blockage. However, that means you have to disassemble the whole hot end, which is not that great. A lot of printers these days are being supplied with this little rod. It's about 1.5 millimeters thick, and you can use this to basically punch out the, the blockage from the heat break while the printer is on and everything is obviously assembled. You can get these or similar things uh, on the internet, uh, but you can also go into a hardware store and get something like a 1.5 millimeter tungsten welding rod, which works exactly the same. The only difference is these have sort of a handle on top, so they're just easier to use. So to use this, just heat up your hot end and jam this down your extruder with extreme prejudice and watch the mess fall out. Actually, very satisfying. If, however, this doesn't work, please don't continue jamming this down the extruder because you will compact that blockage, making it harder to remove. If you're having a problem getting it out, you would need to remove the heat break from the hot end and then use your heat gun or a solvent approach to get rid of it. If you're not sure where your blockage is, then you can use the acupuncture needle and just thread it through the nozzle. And if it blocks right there, that means the tip is blocked. But if it goes higher up, it might be an issue with the heat break. Okay, lesson over. Let's put this into practice. I have here a 0.25 millimeter Revo nozzle, which is blocked. I can't use the acupuncture needle at the tip because it's too small and the nozzle and heat break are integrated, which may compound the problem. Let's see if my advice actually works. If I use the rod, I find that it can't be pushed deep in. So the issue at the very least is with the heat break. A cold pull probably won't do it here. So let's try the heat gun. If that still hasn't worked, then we can use the solvent approach. Just dip this in and wait for it to dissolve and then give it a poke with the rod and see if it is softer. Let the solvent evaporate and then put it back in the printer and heat it up and give it another poke with the rod to push out the filament. With some luck, you will have a perfectly working nozzle again. Okay, this has been soaking in ethyl acetate for a while. Let's see if the rod can go a little bit further than before. Okay, it can go a little bit further, but there's still a blockage further down. Hopefully that is just what remains from the ethyl acetate. And if we put it in the hot end, it should be able to just melt out. Yeah, success. And that is how you unclog a 0.25 millimeter nozzle. I hope this little guide has helped any of you having nozzle problems. And if you have any questions or you know of any other methods that are used to unclog nozzles, then please let us know in the comments below. Or you can join us on Discord where there is conversation every day. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.